Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today we are going to discuss about one of the most commonly used drugs in the ED, which is lignocaine. So, lignocaine is a well-known local anesthetic. It comes in the amide group of local anesthetic, and other than local anesthetic properties, it is having vasodilate, um, sorry, bronchodilatory action, and also it can be used in arrhythmias and in a case of cardiac arrest. So, first we will talk about the local anesthetic effects of the lignocaine. So, I have some preparations uh, available with me. Um, in, uh, I have lignocaine gel, lignocaine spray and uh, some uh, lignocaine vials for local infiltration. Other than that, we have the lignocaine eye drops are there, lignocaine ointments are available. So, these are the other uh, preparations of lignocaine available. So, when we are coming to lignocaine jelly, it is a 30 gram lignocaine jelly in total and it contains 2 percentage of lignocaine and it can be used in uh, simple procedures like Riles tube insertion or Foley's catheterization or in uh, some uh, invasive procedures like bronchoscopy, endoscopy and all. It is having, it, since it is a jelly, it is having a lubricant action so that the bronchoscope or the Riles tube, whatever tube we are inserting inside will go inside uh, with that lubricant action. Uh, along with that, it will give local anesthetic effect also. So that is a lignocaine jelly. Then we have the lignocaine spray. So, uh, usually in lignocaine jelly, lignocaine uh, uh, injections and all, it is available as 2 percentage most commonly. But this is actually 10 percentage lignocaine. So, uh, it is actually a clear bottle with 50 ml of solution in it, 50 ml of 10 percentage lignocaine in it. And each ml will contain 100 mg of lignocaine and one puff. If you are giving one puff, that will deliver 10 mg of lignocaine to the patient. So, this uh, lignocaine sprays can be used for any... Uh, oral procedures or indirect laryngoscopy or if you are taking uh, doing some suturing or some small procedures in the oral cavity or it can be used in blind nasotracheal intubation so this is lignocaine spray and now i have two uh, lignocaine uh, vials uh, which contain which is one as a clear bottle one as a dark bottle so clear bottle just contains two percent lignocaine and this dark bottle will contain two percent lignocaine along with one is to two lakh solution of uh, sorry concentration of adrenaline in it so why adrenaline with lignocaine so adrenaline is having a vasoconstrictive property uh, so that low only uh, that lignocaine will not go to uh, other places. L lignocaine will be there in that uh, local area itself, and it is adrenaline is having some vasoconstrictive property also. So low dose of lignocaine will be there, and more lignocaine will be uh, locally available. So lignocaine with adrenaline, if you are using, we need only a low dose of li uh, lignocaine. So uh, this lignocaine can be used for. Uh, uh, any uh, giving blocks in case of any orthopedic procedures, any reduction procedures or in case of any wound uh, debridement and all, we can give blocks with this lignocaine or it can be infiltrated locally uh, before suturing or any other procedures if you are planning to do we can infiltrate locally um, like procedures like uh, as I told suturing or any uh, before inserting a, um, a central line or an arterial line we can give it locally ICDs and all. Okay, so uh, what is the dose of lignocaine when we are giving it uh, locally? So for local infiltration, the dose is coming as 4 to 5 mg per kg is the dose. And each ml of this 30 ml lignocaine, each ml will contain 21.3 uh, mg of lignocaine. So suppose we have a 10 kg patient. Uh, so for giving local anesthetic, this patient might uh, require about 45 mg of lignocaine. Uh, so that is coming around 2 ml of lignocaine. And if, suppose if we are having a 50 kg person, that person might require a lignocaine uh, uh, about 10 ml how will uh, 10 ml means uh, 50 kg means uh, 4 to 5 uh, mg per kg will come around 225 and that will come around 10 ml so 10 ml lignocaine might be required for a local anesthetic action and that local anesthetic effect will last for 30 to 120 minutes and uh, we will uh, we will not be giving more than 300 ml of lignocaine uh, for a person in one day 
sorry not uh, more than 300 uh, more, uh, we will not be giving uh, mo uh, more than 300 mg not 300 ml more we will not be giving more than 300 mg that means if it is 50 per uh, kg person we will not be infiltrating more than 14 ml for that uh, patient so that is the lignocaine and uh, if at all we are giving in for blocks and all sometimes some complications like if we are giving it intraarticularly sometimes that can cause the uh, cartilage or the uh, chondral that area the cartilage can cause chondrolysis can be there and sometimes uh, it can cause methemoglobinemia it if at all uh, there is so much of local action that, that can cause methemoglobinemia and if we are use, giving it for a patient with renal failure we don't have to give this much dose we can give low doses also and in, if this patient is having hepatic uh, impairment and all only low dose lignocaine is required and sometimes in case of pseudocolonial stress deficiency and all sometimes this lignocaine uh, can cause adverse effects so uh, these are gen these are in general about the local anesthetic property of the lignocaine other uh, property of lignocaine is the bronchodilatory property so in order to give lignocaine as a bronchodilator we will be use, uh, uh, taking 4 ml of 2 percent lignocaine along with 4 ml of 0.9 uh, percentage of normal saline and we will be giving it as a nebulization for bronchodilatory action so uh, that is about lignocaine and when we are whenever we are planning to give this lignocaine locally uh, infiltrate this lignocaine we will have to attach a cardiac monitor because accidental intravenous uh, infiltration of lignocaine can cause uh, dysrhythmias uh, one another property of lignocaine is it, it can be used as an antiarrhythmic agent. So it is coming as a class 1B antiarrhythmic agent and it is used in arrhythmias in cardiac arrest and all. Even though it is an antiarrhythmic, it can itself precipitate an arrhythmia. That is there. So if at all this uh, we are having a patient in cardiac arrest, when will we use lignocaine so lignocaine is used in a shockable rhythm so after the third shock or uh, and after the fifth shock we will be usually giving the lignocaine and in case of adults the dose of lignocaine is 1 to 1.5 mg per kg we will be giving it as a stat dose in case of after the third shock in cardiac arrest instead of amedron and if uh, if we want to repeat the doses of lignocaine we will be usually giving it as after the fifth shock we will be giving it in a dose of 0.5 to 7, 0.75 milligram per kg will be given and if at all uh, we are planning to give it as a lignocaine infusion uh, in case of arrhythmias uh, not an arrest in case of arrhythmias if you are planning to give it as an infusion we will be giving it a dose of 1 to 4 mg per minute infusion and in case of children the dose of infusion is coming as 20 to 50 microgram per kg per minute infusion. So, these are the uh, doses of uh, lignocaine in case of uh, cardiac arrest and in case of uh, if at all we don't have a IV access to give lignocaine, uh, we can give it through endotracheal tube. So, if at all we are planning to give through an endotracheal tube, we will have to give the uh, three times the dose of um, the one which is given IV. So, if you are planning to give 1 mg per kg uh, lignocaine, um, we will have to give 3 mg per kg in case of uh, if you are giving through an endotracheal tube. And if at all we are giving through an IO axis, the dose is same of that of an IV axis. And uh, some of the contraindications of uh, lignocaine in case of uh, arrhythmias is that uh, it can cause uh, bradycardia. Uh, and uh, arrhythmia so uh, it is usually uh, not given in case of av block in case of uh, cardiac failure in chf and all we usually uh, it is contraindicated lignocaine is actually contraindicated and uh, in case of any accessory pathways or wpw syndrome and all uh, we, um, lignocaine is actually contraindicated so these are some of the uh, contraindications of lignocaine now we will discuss about the adverse effects of lignocaine. So uh, lignocaine as I told in case of hepatic dysfunction and in case of renal failure we need only less dose of lignocaine. So if the patient's creatine clearance is less than 30 and all we need only mild doses of lignocaine. And uh, uh, we should also note that in case of pregnancy and lactation this um, lignocaine can cause um, cross the placental barrier and it can uh, be expressed in breast milk also. 
coming to specific side effects of lignocaine, uh, it can cause headache, irritability and all. And in case of uh, cardiovascular system, which is the most uh, grave uh, side effects, there it can cause bradyarrhythmias, it can cause uh, uh, circulatory shock, um, heart failure can be caused and it can cause uh, 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 coronary vasospasm also and it can cause thro uh, local thrombophlebitis and in case of uh, central nervous system patient can be agitated there can be anxiety confusion coma uh, dizziness can be there the uh, patient might have seizures uh, patient might feel neuropathy like peripheral neuropathy like symptoms might be there and patient might feel a metallic taste also might be felt and in case of uh, per abdomen or the GIT findings patient might have nausea and vomiting and in case of the respiratory system as such patient uh, even though it is a bronchodilator if we are give a in case of IV local anesthetic toxicity or lignocaine toxicity patient can have, have a um, respiratory uh, spasm or the bronchospasm might be there and patient might go in for a respiratory depression. So, initially the patient might be uh, uh, complaining of headache, irritability, metallic taste and all and later on only this patient might go in for the toxicity like um, uh, seizures, um, irrit uh, seizures, uh, coma, then uh, arrhythmias and all will be there. So, initially itself we will have to pick it as a lignocaine toxicity that will be manifested usually if this patient is um, getting lignocaine infusion and all or Accidentally, if the infiltrated lignocaine has gone into the systemic circulation only, patient might be having these symptoms. So, if at all we are uh, getting, uh, if you are if you are detecting that this patient is having lignocaine toxicity, immediately we will have to stop that lignocaine. We will have to call for help. Uh, make sure that this patient is attached to a cardiac monitor before, because uh, if at all we are planning to give lignocaine in any case, we want a cardiac monitor to be attached to detect the arrhythmia. So, uh, make sure that this patient is having cardiac monitors uh, established. IV access make sure this patient is not having any hypoxia or acidosis uh, if at all the uh, supplement oxygen is required start on oxygen and then we will have to manage the toxicity as such if at all this patient is developing seizure secondary to uh, lignocaine then we can manage it by giving benzodiazepines or uh, propofol and if at all this patient is developing some arrhythmias because of lignocaine then in such case we cannot again give lignocaine for arrhythmia so manage it according to the uh, tachyarrhythmia algorithm in according to ACLS and for uh, drug selection give, take amedron instead of lignocaine do not give lignocaine in lignocaine toxicity and if at all this patient going for cardiac arrest manage it as a uh, uh, start CPR, give adrenaline and uh, if it is a shockable rhythm, give the shock and give uh, amedron, do, not lignocaine. So, manage it as according to uh, the cardiac arrest algorithm. And the specific antidote for lignocaine is lipid emulsion and lipid emulsion is indicated only if this patient is having uh, side effects, uh, local anesthetic to toxicity properties like seizure arrhythmias and cardiac arrest. So, only in these three conditions we will be giving um, lipno, uh, lipid emulsion and the lipid emulsion dose is a, it is also according to the weight. If the patient is more than 70 kg we will be giving 1.5 ml per kg of lipno, uh, lipid emulsion as a stat dose followed by an infusion of to a 0.25 mg per uh, ml per kg per minute. So, it is available as ml. So, uh, if it is a uh, a uh, patient more than 70 kg will be giving 1.5 ml per kg followed by uh, 0.25 ml per kg per minute infusion and if this patient is less than 70 kg we will be usually giving 100 ml as a stat dose and 200 to 250 ml uh, in few, uh, we'll, we'll give that much 200 to 250 ml over the next 30 minutes and if at all uh, after that we will be monitoring the patient and if at all this patient is still persisting to have any cardiovascular um, uh, if uh, cardiovascular side effects arrhythmias or or any uh, irritability and all we will have to repeat the dose and maximum we will be giving only 12 ml per kg of lipid emulsion so uh, that is the antidote of lignocaine which is the lipid emulsion 
So we have discussed about lignocaine and the different lignocaine uh, preparations available for local anesthesia. And we have discussed the uh, uh, role of uh, lignocaine in uh, bronchodilatory reaction and we have also discussed about the uh, role of lignocaine in uh, cardiac arrest and arrhythmias. So uh, I hope you have understood. Uh, that is about lignocaine and we also discuss about the uh, lignocaine toxicity and how to detect lignocaine toxicity and how to manage lignocaine toxicity and the antidote for lignocaine. Thank you.